You're watching the Amsterdam Film Show. We're going to talk about the new releases in the cinemas in the Netherlands this week. We're going to talk about one particular film with a local film journalist. We'll cover film events going on in Amsterdam and maybe even talk to some Amsterdammers about what they thought about the films they've seen recently. Keep watching. The November Man, starring ex-Bond actor Piers Brosnan in an almost Bond-like role, co-starring Olga Kurilenko, also an alumni of the Bond franchise. Nena, a Dutch-German production telling the story of 16-year-old Nena who is confronted with a suicide attempt of her handicapped father. Above Us All 3D, a Dutch film set in Australia. When Shay, an Australian girl, loses her mother, she and Father Kuhn leave for his country, Belgium. There she finds herself struggling with the new environment and the loss of her mother. And then finally, Clouds of Sils Maria, which is our featured movie of the week, so keep watching. Personal assistant. Congrats, you're going to be all over her. You realize that, right? I'm honored to welcome you here. An interview with an Italian magazine targeting active women seduction after 40. No. <laughs> but it's the cover. No. Okay. Close, he's here to see you. He's a great director. Just hear him out. I played Secret in Maluia's Snake when I was 18. For me, it was more than a role. And because you were Secret, only you can be had in alone. The play tells a simple story. An older woman falls in love with a scheming girl that has her wrapped around her little finger. So who's gonna play Sigrid? Two women are this. She's 19. I will play the one who drives her to a suicide. <laughs> I think she's probably my favorite actress. You mean more than me. You're jealous. It's incredibly brave of you to take on the role of Helena. It's a way of dealing with time. I don't think it's company figures that are keeping you up at night. It's keeping me up at night. Desire. For me, I think. Jermaine? You leave without looking at me. As if I didn't exist. So... So what? I don't know why I have to inflict this on myself. You did sign a contract, pulling out a cost. Figure something out! You hate the play, you hate her. You don't have to take it out on me. I'm used to getting nasty shit written about me. I can honestly care less. She can't accept it. Me neither, I guess. Okay, so you're here with the Amsterdam Film Show. My name's Cathy Leung. We've just finished the press screening for The Clouds of Sils Maria. We're going to have a chat with a member of the local Dutch film press about the film. I am David Pinedo and I'm a local film critic. Yeah. Yeah, but it was sort of good. It was a slow burning plot and you didn't really know where it was going. Yeah. Except that there was, a, there was a lot of tension and the tension was building up very slowly between the strong female characters. And um, yeah, and then it turned out to be a lot more in-depth and philosophical about like the, the, the ravages of time on beauty and how youth replaces age, uh, replaces older people and... Um, aging, oh, aging actresses, and I think Juliette Binoche did a really great job at at, at showing the struggles of a fading actress uh, uh, in this in this role, and also Kristen Stewart, who is playing a, a role quite tongue in cheek uh, with a lot of the, the story has a lot of references to the the Hollywood mania and the press and her her twilight history. Uh, she sort of solves her problem with where to go next very well in this in this uh, in this movie by. Uh, Sort of making poking fun at herself, um, and and it, it, it's interesting how the play within the within the movie uh, is sort of reflecting back what was happening between the two main characters, where they're practicing the play and they're reading through it, and then at the same time you could see how there was echoes of that play taking place in the in the in the in the script of the movie. So uh, there were there were a lot of things to pay attention to, and in the meantime. The, the movie builds up very slowly in suspense and there are some really twisted dark moments where you 
have to laugh and snicker at what they're, what they're trying to tell you. So, yes, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Did it seem like a play to you, theatrical? Yes, it felt, it felt indeed like it could have been a play, mm -hmm. uh, but it would have been a very difficult play because you have to play within the play. So. Yeah. But in this case, I think it worked very well cinematically, also because of the beautiful vistas of Switzerland and that metaphor of impending doom by the, the, the clouds of Sils Marie that are sneaking from Italy over the mountains uh, into Switzerland and predicting something bad is going to happen, which, well, you'll have to see the movie to figure out what's really going to happen in the end. But have you followed Juliette Binoche through her career? Yeah, she, uh, I think, well, I think for me, the first time I saw her in theaters was in 96 or 97 for The English Patient, and she immediately got her Oscar there. And um, uh, she's been doing a lot of different things. Uh, and I remember one of my fa her one of my favorite roles of her is uh, uh, in in a certified copy or copie conform was the original French title by the Iranian uh, director Abbas Kiyavostami. And it was also had this sort of meta quality where she was playing a woman who was she or isn't or who, who who is not sure about what she what she needs to do later in life and she's questioning her relationships with her former lovers which also happens in this movie so um uh, yeah that she's a great actress <laughs> she was more animated than i've seen her in anything before did you feel that uh try try watching copie conform okay. <laughs> she's yeah. really good in that movie she won best actress in Cannes for that film oh. i'd like to see it with different generations women to see yeah. what, how they have experienced or how they experience this movie because it is a woman's movie and although perhaps directed and written by a man yeah Oliver SIS yeah, yeah. Uh, you uh, you can see I mean the, the woman control the, the movie and the men are all made out to be sort of idiots I think or sort of brutes or naive and mm -hmm. in most of the uh, most of the male characters in the movie are not yeah. that... They're not interesting. No, no, no. They're just there for the women to, p to play with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then lastly, uh, Chloe Moretz, who doesn't yeah. come into the film no. very much until the very end. No. Um, and it is a long film, yeah. so you have to wait a long time for her to come yeah. and also for her to interact with Juliet yeah. Binoche as Maria. Uh, so Maria and um, Joanne, yeah. it's their characters. Um, although you had to wait a long time, did she still make an impact? I think that she had... She was uh, uh, very important because she's, uh, she's there in the beginning. She's not there physically and interacting with the actresses, but she's on Google and she's, she has these great little short films where she's actually um, uh, screaming at everybody at the paparazzi and it's the sort of TMZ um, videos that, that the director sort of put in there, uh, I think also making reference to Lindsay Lohan and yeah. perhaps Kristen Stewart in a few. She, she was quite good though with the paparazzi. But yeah somebody like a Lindsay Lohan and um, and and then she's actually what makes I think what drives uh, the character of Juliette Binoche to a sort of despair or like questioning her her capabilities as an older actress because as every as the media a, a, a sort of um, a, a adores youth mm. she feels like she's fading and uh, although Chloe isn't there in every scene she's there in the background as a sort of ominous threat This is your last week to see the David Cronenberg exhibition at the I Film Museum in Amsterdam. The film director David Cronenberg has acquired cult status with his idiosyncratic films about the relationship between body, mind, technology and mass media. Here's a bit about the exhibition. So I think the overall theme, look and structure of the exhibition was from a series of conversations I had with Cronenberg really related to the idea of uh, the relationship of science and film. I'll get into that more in a second. And then um, Pierce's theory was that uh, Cronenberg's work uh, divides into three very distinctive chapters that sort of relate to personal identity and personal becoming that sort of trace his own, um, uh, David's own evolution as a filmmaker. On the science side of it, um, Cronenberg uh, has a strange back and forth, this oscillation between a fascination with science and technology and a fascination with cinema. He began his career at university studying biology and then switched into English literature um, and continues to have that very interesting back and forth. 
he stud, even today, he, you know, for, for pleasure reading, he picks up uh, microbiology papers, you know, that people in medical institutions are, are, are publishing. Um, and so he, and so there's, behind his films, there's this enormous uh, sort of set of theory, or a collection of theories related to, micro, particularly microbiology and technology, and how they actually affect uh, human beings and human society. I mean, these little things that we all carry around with us, you know, these little phones, you know, are where we, we store now half of our brains, you know, and this is something that came, that Cronenberg realized some time ago. On the bio, biological side, uh, it, it's a bit more complex, and I think a lot of critics took a more, how should I say, maybe a more simplistic interpretation of what that meant, and they said, oh, these are horror movies about the human body. They're actually about the porousness, about how bodies aren't actually as firm and uh, together and as one, as unified as we think they are. And we need to show a little bit more humility about how we all interact with the world around us and other bodies. Because, the, you know, the, uh, I guess microbiology has realized that, you know, this, this skin that we see here is actually letting things in and sending things out constantly. And this has been an underpinning of the early films, the body horrors, so to speak, but also how people interact in society in films like History of Violence or A Dangerous Method later. But these are the, uh, when you walk through the exhibition, sort of seeing this idea on one side of how science and humanity interact, and then sort of feeling these sort of three chapters as both an evolution of how human beings actually grow up in the world, but also how Cronenberg's uh, own journey has taken place is, uh, is of great interest. David Cronenberg, The Exhibition, is on at the iFilm Museum until the 14th of September. See iFilm.nl for more details. And lastly, a word from Amsterdamers at the movies. Uh, we just saw Chef, and it was really cool. The soundtrack is amazing, and it makes you hungry, so have a lot of popcorn. <laughs> exactly. We had like three boxes of popcorn during this movie because you just see so much food coming by. And the movie was just phenomenal. A lot of big, great actors in it as well, so I really enjoyed it.